enforce rules of scooter use. Rules include one rider per scooter and leaving scooters in positions on the sidewalk that give adequate space to pedestrians. We're starting this task force to write tickets to people that are on, on public sidewalks, but also to let, let the public get the word out that not only is it against the law, but you will get a hefty fine. Reverend Joe Waller of the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church was honored with a square named for him at 52nd and Compton Avenue for his service and dedication to his community in Council District 9. Guests that were part of the celebration included Council Member Curran Price. This is a, a, gives us a chance to recognize the achievements of an individual uh, who has been uh, faithful to his community, faithful to his constituents, uh, and faithful to our city. Can the transformation of a mom-and-pop store help improve the health of an entire community near downtown LA? Lupita's Corner Market owner says yes, as they reopen their doors. Anna Marcos pays a visit to find that health is very much a part of the menu. A little more paint, shelving, and the stocking of merchandise and Lupita's Market is almost ready for business. The business of making the community healthier. Once a year, we do select one or two small markets to become a transformation. Right now, we're trying to catch up. We are bringing in some merchandise. We're bringing in fruits. This was Lupita's Market just over six months ago. A dark, cramped mom-and-pop store on a street corner near downtown L.A. where the snack du jour for kids coming in after school was often junk food. But Luz Arango, her mother and family who owned the store, wanted to change that and lead the way to healthier food choices. A lot of our community, they find it really difficult to go to uh, stores and travel miles away just to have either healthier food options. Having a community market that has everything that everybody needs um, is what we have become. It's a very passionate project for a lot of people as it is to our family. The Los Angeles Food Policy Council, which helps stores go healthier, stepped in awarding Lupita's Market a chance at a complete store rehab through its Healthy Neighborhood Network Market Program. Now, $100,000 in renovations later, the market is ready to be reborn. The basic menu is going to be affordable for the, for the community, and they're going to have salads, we're going to have uh, soups. The Healthy Neighborhood Market Network Program is to help small big business store owners in underserved communities, specifically small market owners, to have healthy, fresh, affordable options. These are communities that are generally categorized as food deserts. The project got a lot of help with pro bono work from the Gensler Architectural Firm and Build Group Construction. We had this idea of a uh, farmer's market, so where you would have baskets of fruits and vegetables, and that's what we designed into the furniture in the front. There's going to be seating out front behind the counter here, and the challenging part was the storefront walls. We had to actually tear it down. For the kids who still expect to get their daily after-school snacks, Lupita's Market is offering curbside service during the renovation. So the kids come even though you're remarkable. Yeah, they, yeah. They told me, oh my God, Lupita's no more. What happened? And I said, no, I'm here. So I want to say to everybody, I'm here. Oh, they are definitely here, better than ever. And bananas, oranges, tomatoes, and yogurt never look so good on a shelf. The official grand reopening is scheduled for mid-September. Los Angeles celebrates its 238th birthday with a nine mile long march and celebration. Angelinos make the journey every year in honor of the city's founding. Today is happy birthday. Happy birthday to the city of Los Angeles. We're celebrating the 238th birthday and we're celebrating it here at the birthplace of Los Angeles, El Pueblo. It's a great example of how the history of LA, and even its founding, is a diverse tapestry, you know, of many, many threads from many, many, many different cultures. So not only is this an event that celebrates our shared history, it's also a celebration of our diversity and our inclusion.
it's an honor to be here to, in memory of our ancestors in, in the founding of what is today Los Angeles. Do you think events like this are important? Yes, yes I do. I think they're important because this is part of the history of LA. At Guata Tayi Hanuka, in the memory of our ancestors. Thank you. Tacos, fried chicken, collard greens, mac and cheese? Hungry yet? I am. That was on the menu at a recent city employee luncheon put on by council member Curran Price. It was a chance for all city employees to get together and mingle over some good eats. All the departments do an extraordinary job whenever they're called upon uh, and just doing their duties. And so we just want to say thank you. This is a way of saying thank you. Come on in. There we go. Yes. <laughs> whenever there's an event that highlights or honors our employees, I want to be there because they are the best. They work their guts out. They're the glue that keeps the city together. I can tell you the, the new 9th district under the leadership of Curran D. Price is on the move. Great things are happening. We came by to celebrate with them. come to events like this, uh, you see people from Urban Forest, you see people from Sanitation, you see people from Lock Meeting, and you know, some of these people you know, some of them kind of transition through your department, and now they're at different departments, so the, the camaraderie of it all is all great, you know, it's good. It was all about the written word as authors, poets, artists, and book lovers came out for the annual Lamert Park Village Book Fair which promotes reading and literacy in an entertaining and engaging way. What's going on today is the LaBert Park Book Festival. As you can see, we are exploding that myth that black people don't read. We read, okay? And we're demonstrating it today. We have to make reading exciting. We free to read. People want to stay on their phones. They won't want to go outside and play video games. No, we got to destroy that behavior. We got to make them read because knowledge is power. Anything you want to find, you can find in a book. And what you got to do, you got to read. Um, this event is very nice. I really enjoy all the books that I'm seeing. A lot of variety. You have poetry, um, you have the Arthur's out and the children's books and the, it's just a great event for the family. So I would like to hopefully just, you know, meet some of the authors and, and get some book signing as well. I'm here to uh, try to complete this particular piece today. Because I knew Nipsey and his brother, and then I'm from the neighborhood, it really uh, touched me enough to pay tribute to him. It was a dirt path for years, but now a sidewalk at Fenton Charter School in Lakeview Terrace is about to get a much needed transformation and community members couldn't be any happier. Today we were conducting a groundbreaking here at the corner of Fenton and Terrabella where we are finally delivering a sidewalk adjacent to uh, one of our most prestigious grammar schools in the area. Something that's been sought after for well over 25 years. What this project will do will, will 
widen this both Tarabella and Fenton by 20 feet on each side. We'll add a 13 foot wide sidewalk, so it'll be a much different look and much improved for, uh, for motorists, for pedestrians primarily, uh, for the students that would come here to this uh, elementary school. So we expect that construction will commence in a couple of weeks and, uh, you know, hopefully shortly thereafter we'll all be, you know, we'll have a bunch of kids running on some sidewalk. A big day for the community and after all these years, you know, we came in and I got here working with the Bureau of Engineering, we're getting it done. Do you think twice before using a public bathroom at a local park? Most of us do, including me. But city officials are hoping to flush out that experience by debuting the city's first self-cleaning toilet. Three, two, one. <laughs> this type of restroom automatically cleans itself after we had this one set for 30 uses. This is the first one of these in the entire city of Los Angeles. We have 660,000 visits to our parks a week. Think of the burden on the maintenance employees of this department to maintain 1,600 bathrooms that are being used constantly. We have to look to innovation, we have to look to technology to find solutions. What happens here is after every 30 uses, a sanitizing agent will spray over the floor and the toilet area. That sanitizing agent will sit then for a minute and then the water nozzles will come on and that will wash the sanitizing agent away. And then after the wash cycle, the dryers come on and push all that water to a trench drain at the front of the unit. So after this 10 minute cycle, we have a refreshed and hygienic cubicle again uh, that smells great and is ready for use. An automated system like this realizes tremendous cost savings on maintenance. Um, it's a cleaner, nicer uh, bathroom to use than a conventional bathroom facility is. And it also plays music. Thank you very, very much. Oh, it's a great pleasure. 15 years we've been playing tennis here, and we don't have a beautiful like this restaurant. Thank, Thank you. Very, oh, that's very, very, very kind of you to say. This is a city that has been known throughout its modern history as a place of innovation and creativity and uh, doing the next big thing. And this may be a step in that direction as well. It was fun for the whole family during a pool party and movie night at the Echo Park Pool sponsored by Councilmember Gil Stadia. We are having family movie night today. This is the first time we host it here at this facility, so I'm really excited that the community is here and we get to meet them. It's a free event today, so it's great for everybody to come out. It's super warm outside, so nice for them to come and float in the water, watch the movie, and enjoy themselves. I grew up doing this, I'm doing it, I'm 77 years old, I'm still doing it, I love it. Uh, it, it helps kids grow, swimming is good for the mind, the body and the soul. Come, bring your swimsuit, bring your towel, sign up for our programs. Find your favorite movie scene location during a scavenger hunt, enjoy some yoga at the beach, and take in the beauty of traditional Korean folk dance. All this and much more in Things to Do. On your marks, get set, go. It's a movie-themed scavenger hunt in downtown. You'll get to see where some scenes from movies such as Speed, Wedding Crashers, Pretty Woman, Ghostbusters, and Beverly Hills Cop, to name a few, were filmed. The scavenger hunt also includes exploration of odd artwork, some strange sights and figures, a cryptic message, and a stop in the vibrant Grand Central Market. This event takes place on September 7th and starts at Pershing Square, 532 South Olive Street. The event starts at 2 p.m. and goes till 4.30. For more info and to RSVP, call 1-877-9-GO-HUNT.
Get out that yoga mat and the beach towel and come out and enjoy a day on the beach with Thick Girl Yoga LA. The day is filled with yoga, games, and giveaways. Plus, breathing exercises, body awareness, and a bliss bag. The event will be held on September 7th from 12 noon to 6 p.m. at Dockweiler Beach, located at 13173 West Pacific Promenade in Playa Vista. For the exact location, be sure to follow Thick Girl Yoga LA Beach Party on Facebook. The Korean Classical Music and Dance Company invite you to come see their ceremonial court and social folk dances integral to Korean culture. The ensemble presents rich, graceful, and elegant dance forms. The presentation also includes educational segments with Korean folk dancers. The dance company will be hosted by the Los Angeles Public Library Central Branch at 630 West 5th Street on September 8th from 2 to 3 p.m. For more info, visit Inventbrite. The Secret Movie Club is at it again on Saturday, September 8th. They'll be screening Mothra vs. Godzilla as part of their Kaiju Summer Series. Bring the whole family to the historic Vista Theater at 4473 Sunset Drive in Las Feliz. Settle in with snacks and some drinks for what is sure to be a roaring night. The screening takes place on September 8th. For tickets or more info, visit Eventbrite. The City of Los Angeles and Councilwoman Nuri Martinez cordially invite all Angelinos to this year's celebration of El Grito. This free arts and music festival will be the kickoff event in recognition of Latino Heritage Month. Food trucks, silent disco, DJ dance party, and more. Don't miss out on El Grito coming September 15th beginning at 5 p.m. For more info, contact Nuri Martinez's City Hall office at 213. 213- Four seven three seven zero zero six, and that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Umaima Rashid. From all of us here at LA this week, thank you for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA this week. an accident, just stay. Call 911. Help if you can. You might save someone's life. Obey the rules of the road. The two things I love the most, my family and my city, are right here in LA. This is a city of shared convictions, a belief in a country where we all belong. I am so proud of this city and its people.
Good morning, good morning. If everyone would please take a seat. Do we have more than 10? If everyone would please take a seat. Uh, today is September 3rd, Tuesday. I want to welcome you to City Council. <coughs> this council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Blumenfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Harris Dawson, Weezer, Caretz, Krikorian, Lee, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Wu, Wesson. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. First order of business. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Lee moves, uh, Blumenfield seconds. Next. Approval of the minutes. O'Farrell moves, Price seconds. Next. Today is Tuesday, Mr. President, and time for the flag salute. If I could ask everyone in council chambers to please rise, we'll be led today in our flag salute by Mr. John Lee. You gotta lead us in the flag salute. <clears throat> please say flag, put your right hand over your heart. Pledge allegiance to, to, to the flag, flag of, the of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lee. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's continue moving through the agenda. Mr. President, there is a request to continue item 10 to Friday, September 6. Okay, so or ordered, continue. Items one through six are items noticed for public hearing. Do you have cards on these items? Yes, there are cards on all six items. Okay, then let's move on to the next section. Items seven through 18 are items for which public hearings have been held. All right, let's, uh, there are no specials. And let's uh, prepare to vote on these items. Mr. Rue, hold number seven. Let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. Thank you, continue. And Mr. President, those ordinances will be held over one week unless reconsider reconsidered with 12 members present. Thank you. Uh, the next section. Items 19 through 30 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do you have cards on these items? Yes, we have cards on all items. All right. That brings us where? Mr. President, that then takes council back to presentations, items called special or general public comment. All right. Corey uh, Schmidt, come forward. Corey, you have items 1 through 6, 20 through 29 in general public comment. Yes, sir. Okay. Corey Schmidt, for the record, uh, I'm sure... Well, I, uh, w I found out that I, uh, I'm not allowed to bring a microwave and I'm not allowed to bring a fire extinguisher. So those props. So are let's get to go. on top. Let's get on topic. And in your general public comment, you okay. can talk about the props. So. so number one through six in regards to the lighting districts, um, I just want to bring up the fact that, uh, that this technology, I told you that it, it kills plants. Um, but now I'm going to let you know that it can start fires. So uh, I brought the uh, extinguisher to emphasize the fact that I'm putting that shit out because um, it's not cool. It can uh, and just, I, I kind of forgot what I was going to say other than that. It's just, uh, I'm not okay with it. So that needs to be on the record. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say is that uh, trying to put it on homeless people, that that's the cause, but it's actually uh, this. Okay, let's so get on topic now. Um, okay, so in regards to number seven, uh, head of done. You don't I, have seven. Uh, that I just want to say yes on. Um, okay, and then 20 through 21, the festivals, Latin Jazz Festival, yes. 
Uh, number 22 in regards to multifamily housing bond. Um, I'm cool with that, but I'm not cool with uh, subsidizing projects that uh, aren't affordable. So I have a feeling that it's not. Um, so that's why I say no to it right now. Uh, number 23 in regards to beautification in CD2, yes. Uh, 24 for cameras along Western, uh, yes, but only until we clean these streets up. Um, number 25 in regards to the swimming pool, open on weekends, I say yes. Uh, number 26, maintenance services in CD8, yes. Uh, taco festival, number 28. Uh, yes. 29 for community engagement on CD7. Yes. Uh, and to my public comment. Just uh, give Erica, if you give him his one minute for public comment. So uh, my, uh, my general public comment, I wanted to speak on um, uh, the walkability. I've been cleaning up a lot of trash around here. I've been picking up a lot of shit off the ground and uh, just picking up people's trash, cleaning up after people. And uh, I noticed that the, uh, one of the main reasons why there's so much shit on the ground is because there's not enough trash cans. And I, I really think that I would like to instill that. Um, if we, we want to talk about walkability and making it more uh, friendly for people to be along the streets, um, I think we should have more trash cans uh, along the streets. Uh, that way it doesn't look so dirty. And uh, if we could... I'd be interested in setting up some sort of coordinated like litter cleanup uh, with LA Sanitation, because um, I'm just tired of doing it myself. I could use some help, so um, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay, do we have a Mr. Hong? K, K Hong. All right, next, Craig. Do we have a Craig? Craig, you have items three, four, and five, and then your general public comment. Items okay, three, four, and five. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Items, you have items three, four, and five. Okay, I know you're going to start me here, but I have to pull out this picture here, if I can. See, now that I'm here with you, I probably can't. But uh, yeah, my name is Craig, and I'm a community rep since 1992. And I've always been involved in the community. So uh, I've experienced a social circumstance at the Los Angeles Public Law Library. What I am is that I put myself through law school. It makes me an intellect. Okay, okay, Craig, you got That's a That's general first, comment, right? You got a first, we, we're not there yet. You're on oh. items three. Four okay, item three five. is, okay, now what I felt to be is when it said protest and art, and it was talking about, it was talking about, I think it said something about the environment. And I was thinking about, you know, sociologists and psychologists and psychoanalysts have come into so the community actually, and used data. Craig, and they said, uh, speaking three, about four, the environment, five, right? You know, they're about street lighting. Uh, three, okay, four, well. Lighting. So if you want to protest about yeah, Well, okay, three. I'm going to predicate my conversation on street lighting, whatever suits your fancy, Mr. Uh, City Attorney. Okay, street lighting isn't relevant. And the relevancy of street lighting is, I think, in that particular community or my community, I'm going to have to go with your flow, is to prevent uh, social disorder. If you have dark places, I think people thrive to commit crimes in dark places. When you say street lighting, maybe it could be street lightings on the streets to stop the traffic from driving 90 miles an hour. Maybe it could be street lights on the little things, you know, the little sidewalk things to keep people from going over the speed bumps and, and injuring the bicyclists or late night walkers such as myself with my little dog. We're talking about street lights. Whatever community in which you're speaking about, I have no idea, but I'm just trying to get to my particular point. I'm trying to eat up these items three, four, and five so you can see my face. I'm going to become a regular now. I don't see Adam Walsh anymore. That was my friend. So I'm back to the street light. So what Adam Walsh taught me is to speak on whatever you want, Mr. City Attorney. So based on the street lights, I'm, I have one minute. Okay, I've, I've seen, I've seen, like the brother said, I've seen a lot of people do a lot of things in dark places when you say street lighting. Uh, can we light the city? The city is not lit. There's enclaves and holes and, and, and shit you don't want to be seen. You don't have street lighting for that. Now, can we move on to another item? Is it my? We can go to general let's, public comment. Okay, okay can we go to general public, general public okay. comment? Give him okay, his one minute. Okay, now, now based, I only get one minute. 
58 seconds? Okay, based on general public comment, I was at the Los Angeles uh, Public Law Library, and a Hispanic, he approached me, and he said that I was not wanted around here. He filed a complaint with the Los Angeles Police Department that read to, it called criminal threat. They went back and looked at my criminal past. I said, wait, this dude ain't got no criminal past. They, they, what DA reject, they freed me from the Los Angeles uh, 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 County Jail. I went three days in the county jail because the guy at the, uh, at the public law library said that I was, uh, I was a criminal threat and the district attorney dismissed all the charges. I'm trying to find which address do I go to to file my civil rights complaint. I've called 15 numbers. I have an address from the city of Los Angeles. And it says Eric Garcetti and some other guy from the Library Association Board of Library Commissioners. Which entity do I approach to file my civil complaint? Can you help me with that? Because I do have something for the Los Angeles uh, a Public Law Library and a specific. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kokorian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to let the speaker know. Um, that the county, the law library, sir, the law library is operated by the county of Los Angeles, not the city. Sir, 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 the library, <laughs> the library, the law library is operated by the county, not by the city. So any uh, complaints you have should be directed to the county of Los Angeles. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get note. Okay, let's. The, Thank you, Mr. Craig. Okay, do we have a uh, Miss Cruz? Sanchez Cruz? Miss Cruz? Brianna Gonzalez? Mia Marie Hayes? Yes. I want to ask, can you um, help me with an attorney? Because I have um, been helping the general Johnny Lee Austin upon his divorce from Joan Beverly Duvall. And so, yes, it is proclaimed that my name is Mia Marie Hayes, but my real identity, if you look up the census report, it comes back underneath federal paperwork that my name is Brianna Gonzalez. And I do have family here in California. So I just want my legal documents of me helping General Johnny Lee Austin and plus the companies that we have built in 1997 along with 1990 when I was ordered to go to Louisiana. Can I get an attorney please so I could get those documents so I could get my money so I could be able to do what I really want to do, please? Did you want to, well, well, thank you. Why don't you sit over there and we'll see if we can get somebody to advise you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, let's, before I call the next speaker, let's vote on items number one through six. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. Okay, now we'll vote on items 19 through 30. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Madam, do you want to do the reconsideration? You want to inform us as to those items? Yes, so we'll be reconsidering for the ordinances, items 8, 9, and 11. Okay, let's vote on reconsideration on those items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Now we'll actually vote on those items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Harris Dawson. Uh, requesting items 25 and 26 forthwith. So ordered. All right, do we have a James Russell? Please come forward. Clarence Brandenburg. Do we have a clearance? Okay, Mr. Russell. Yes, hi, this is for Councilmember David Rue. You represent my district. I just want you to know that I can't vote for you again. Uh, I'm never going to donate for you, knock on doors for you, or encourage my neighbors to support you. And unfortunately, it has nothing to do with you did, what you did, it has to do with what your staff did. I contacted them last year about fraudulent tickets given out by the Parking Violations Bureau. 
They have a history of this. The city attorney defended them. Cody Weiss's case cost the taxpayers $1.34 million. And I contacted your staff to talk about it. They refused to set a meeting for you. They thought the city was in the right. Okay. So I took the Parking Violations Bureau to court. I won. I came back to your staff wanting a meeting. They refused. They wanted a whole bunch of other documentation, which I now found out is not normal for their office. I don't know why they're asking for this documentation, but they don't ask it for other folks. Uh, you know, all it would have taken is a 15, maybe a 30 minute meeting with you, and you would have had, you know, a disappointed constituent, but, you know, I still would have supported you. I can't after this. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Do again, last call for Clarence Brandon, Brandenburg. Clarence? Okay, Clarence is not uh, here. So, Madam Clerk, that closes multi-comment and public comment at this time. Let's now move to item number seven. Item number seven, I'd like to first recognize Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to invite Ms. Beltran to the table. Mr. President, colleagues, I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Raquel Beltran, and I want to congratulate her on her appointment to be the next general manager of the Department of Empowerment, uh, Neighborhood Empowerment. And uh, we had an amazing chat in my office as well as at our committee uh, meeting about your vision, your goals, and a little bit about your history. And uh, we're so fortunate to have her uh, she is the former executive director of the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles and also at the Pat Brown Institute at Cal State LA, already working with neighborhood councils for the Civic University. And I know many of the members here already spoke there or uh, participated in that for all the neighborhood councils. But you've answered all my questions and answered all the committee's questions, but I wanted to give you the uh, opportunity to make a statement before the entire city council before we take this vote. Thank you very much. Good morning, Council President Wesson, honorable members of the City Council. I come before you excited, <coughs> committed, and ready to serve as the General Manager for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. I appreciate the opportunity that has been provided to me to be considered for this position. The Department's stated mission is to promote civic engagement, to make government more responsive to local needs through a citywide system of neighborhood councils. I'm looking forward to the prospect, if confirmed, to partner with the mayor and the city council, the city clerk, and the city attorney who work closely with the department and all other city departments to further the department's stated mission. Most importantly, I look forward to serving and supporting members of the neighborhood councils. I bring to the city of Los Angeles my combined experience in civic engagement, public administration, which includes experience developing well-structured governance bodies at a local level and community organizing. For me, organizing is providing people with the opportunity to become aware of their own capabilities and potential. To give people hope, you have to have hope yourself. Specific to this position, I have had the opportunity to work in partnership with neighborhood council leaders for over 10 years in several different roles including at the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles and most recently at the Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs at Cal State LA. It was while serving as executive director of the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles that I was introduced to this amazing dual democracy system of neighborhood councils. It was in this space that I was able to interact with communities throughout Los Angeles on a broad range of issues, including the management of community-based elections, such as the resident advisory councils for the Housing Authority for the City of Los Angeles. My work at the Pat Brown Institute at Cal State LA supporting the Civic University for Neighborhood Councils served to, among many things, allow me to guide neighborhood council leaders on the use of effective government advocacy techniques and considerations. Serving the neighborhood councils in this new immensely challenging role is an opportunity of a lifetime. My deep interest in this position is motivated by a lifelong commitment to serving the communities in which I live and work. As my children said to me when I shared this journey with them, 
You mean you might get hired to do what you do for fun? The, proce the process to be considered for this position has allowed me to learn more about future expectations of this system of neighborhood democracy. They are varied, numerous, and understandably complex. My initial inclination will be to examine the extent to which city government's relationship with community pursuant to the department's mission can be administered through greater efficiency and improvement and expansion of its internal and external partnerships. I look forward to working with you to define and advance the future of the department to build public confidence. I'm committed to doing my very best and I'm happy to answer questions you may have. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Rue. Are there any questions? Yeah, uh, I was gonna recognize Mr. Cedillo. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm just interested in how and what thoughts you have about uh, bilingualism, multilingualism, what actions you'll take to make sure that these meetings are conducted in languages of which the community speaks on a daily basis. I see that is uh, certainly something the department does in my experience with the department, but in all the work that I've done in the community, we've always embedded translation interpreta interpreters and translators in the community work that we do. In the League of Women Voters, one of the partnerships we had with uh, a, a, a group of neighborhood councils was to administer a candidate debate. That candidate debate was translated in four languages. And the vetting process was translated in, in foreign languages, and then the interpreters had to translate everything. It had to be read back to the community when present, uh, presenting their questions so that the candidates would know what the different communities think. That would be the way in which I would move forward. All right. Uh, well, anyway, we want to thank you for, you know, offering to do this very important job, but a very, very challenging job as well. I think one of the most important things you're gonna have to be able to do is to create relationships with the various uh, neighborhood councils and, and they're gonna have to feel comfortable in, in coming to you and that you, you have to have really good people skills. Are you ready for this? I am, sir. All right. Okay, Mr. Rue, you wanna close it out? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, colleagues, before I ask for your aye vote, I do want to recognize uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Beltran's husband is in the audience. If we could have him stand. Yes, have him. Just give him a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank we, you. We want to. And wait, uh, is oh, there. And, and my his, son. Uh, and, his, and your son. My oh, son, great. Golden Diego. Come on up. Mm -hmm. Stand up. And we want to thank and apologize to them in advance for all of the extra hours we're going to take from you. Uh, take your uh, wife and mother away because um, um, this is a very intensive department. This is a very important position. And I know a lot of Dunn staff as well as Rafe Sonnenschein from Cal State LA is also here to, see, to witness this. And so colleagues, Mr. President, as a former neighborhood council member myself, I would encourage everybody for an I vote. Thank and you. I, I Thank would you, second Mr. Rue's uh, suggestion. We are excited about you, and uh, let's get this thing started. Many of us on this council feel very, very passionately about the Neighborhood Council, so we're just excited about you and this fresh start moving in a new direction. So with that said, members, let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 nice. Congratulations, you Thank you very vote. much. Okay, you know what, members, before, um, um, before you uh, leave, if we could, uh, let's recess for two minutes. Let's take a photo with the new com uh, the general manager, her family, all the members, and then Mr. Lee will do the the uh, team photo with you as well. So let's just take a two minute recess and uh, we can be real efficient here.
All right, so now we are, are back. Now, there was one public comment card that came in after we had closed public comment, but I want to afford him that minute. I th uh, was it a Del Shade, Jeffrey? Please, we've already closed public comment, but uh, you came all the way all the way down here. We want to give you your minute. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I thought it was at the end. Uh, I just wanted to bring to the council's attention a pilot program in Olympia, Washington called uh, Mitigation Sites regarding uh, homelessness issues. I know there was a big hubbub over the 4118 thing the last time I was here. Uh, I was briefly in contact with one of Huizar's, uh, Councilman Huizar's staff about this concept. Basically, um, the concept is that they take uh, empty lots and uh, put like uh, porta potties, basic hygiene and stuff, and allow people to have a plot to stay in a tent uh, as a kind of emergency measure to try to treat people who are in need in some kind of a humane way. Uh, I thought it was a good idea. I brought it to uh, Martin Shalik, Shal or something's attention. Uh, I just wanted to bring it to the council's attention. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kokorian? Oh, it's from earlier today, okay. All right, that brings us where? Council has motions for posting a referral. Okay, they are posted, they are referred. Uh, announcements, members, announcements. If we could all please rise for adjourning motions, all please rise. I'm looking to my right side, which is Mr. Lee's side. Don't see any adjournings to my right. Now I'm looking to my left, which is Mr. Buscaino's side. I don't see any members. This meeting is adjourned.